I'm Chris with Marshall Moto Art and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to install my two and a half inch lift on your Polaris midsize Ranger. This lift will also work on some of the full size Rangers. Basically this kit works on 2009 and newer Rangers with the strut front suspension. Um, the brackets vary a little bit from machine to machine. This is an ETX which is basically the same as the 570 uh, and a couple other variations there. Um, but the installation process is basically the same on the strut front suspension machines and uh, mid-size are very particular about the way they're lifted with them being narrower um, you want something that's not going to exceed your CV angles so that everything is safe um, this kit is safe for all of your stock components you don't need to add anything to my kit it will come with everything you need you don't need to run wheel spacers it will work with your factory wheels um, also like this machine has black steel wheels which are the most inset the closest to everything it will work with those as well without wheel spacers. Um, it will accommodate up to a 27 inch tire and then if you were to add forward A-arms with the lift kit on the midsize machines you can run up to a 30. Uh, let's go over the kit and show you what's in it. Okay so here's what comes in your kit. You get a couple of Marshall Moto Art stickers to put on your machine or on your toolbox. Got a bag of your hardware. It's got uh, zinc coated hardware, aluminum spacers, nylock nuts, then in the rear we have our triangle brackets and in the front we get a lift spacer. Let's take a look at these lift spacers. They're all steel. They've got a step built into them so it helps center the spring. And, uh, and in the rear we get a triangle bracket wrap these things up good and tight so that they don't chafe or get any damage during shipping. And your rear brackets are CNC laser cut. So we've got a nice you know, nice piece here. It's fully welded, one piece. Not a bunch of pieces you bolt together. And uh, that's what makes up our kit. Let's go ahead and get this installed. Okay, so we're going to start out by lifting the front suspension. Um, I went ahead and placed a jack underneath the front differential, kind of in between the axles there. Got it nice and secure. And kind of show you what we're going to do in the order of operations here. We're going to end up removing this rubber cover here. And uh, underneath there, there's a, a nut with a cotter pin. Um, this allows the axle during installation, because we're going to be moving the suspension kind of out of its range, it allows that axle to slide in and out while we're doing the installation so we don't pull the CVs apart or, or cause any more work for ourselves. So we'll remove that cotter pin and then the nut and uh, that'll give us uh, just a little bit of easier movement and keep us from pulling things apart. And then we're going to remove the nut off the top here. We'll jack it up enough so that this whole strut will drop down out and we'll tip it out away. And then there's two pinch bolts kind of behind the tire here. You can't see them now. but You'll undo both those bolts, remove the bolts, and then this strut and spring and everything's going to slide right out the top. It's not under a lot of tension. It's not like it's going to go flying or anything crazy. You don't need a spring compressor. Um, just like as you'll see, just basic hand tools, and uh, we'll get this done. We're going to do one side at a time in the front. So we'll go ahead and do this side and show you how it works. So with the steel wheels, we have this just simple rubber cup. If you have the aluminum Polaris wheels, sometimes they'll have a center cap that, that you can remove separately. Otherwise, you may need to remove the wheel in order to get to this on certain, certain Polaris wheels. Um, if you have aftermarket wheels, you may need to do the same. Sometimes, like I say, that center cap will pop off. Other times, you know, just remove those four bolts, remove your wheel, and get this, uh, get this taken off. And uh, the cotter pin, we're going to reuse the same cotter pin. And uh, so we'll kind of... Bend this up out of the way. Get that kind of pushed back there. And we pull the cotter pin out. And you can do this with just a regular gun, you know, ratchet and stuff, but I got an electric deal here, so I'll use it. We've got the nut and the washer, and then see how that plunges in and out now? That's just going to give us a little uh, little bit of movement. So like I say, we're not putting stress on that CV 
and possibly pulling something apart and making more work for ourselves. So we'll undo that. It's not going to pop out. Nothing's going to, weird's going to happen. Your wheel won't fall off. Don't worry about any of that. So once we're done, we'll put that back on. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the top strut nut. Um, I'm going to use an electric gun because I have one. But if you're using a wrench, sometimes uh, the entire strut rod and everything wants to spin. With an impact, this usually spins fast enough that the nut will come off without it spinning. But if you have that issue, the top of the strut right here, um, which is the entire you know strut rod there, is it has a hex on top. So you can go ahead and get a wrench on this, and then put a wrench there, hold this so the the strut doesn't spin, and uh, and get that nut off. But usually with an impact, it'll yeah, it'll just run off nice like that. And then you take this entire assembly off. It's got a washer in like this cup. And uh, we'll set that off to the side. And then we'll go ahead and jack this up. And we jack it up just high enough that we can get this out of way. Don't go any higher than you need to. You don't want to put any more stress on anything than you have to. You can see that start to come out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tip it out away from the machine just like that. And so that's all we really want to get it out at this point. Now we're going to go ahead and remove these two pinch bolts here. Um, they hold this uh, cast aluminum housing with the Polaris written on it. Holds it shut, kind of holding the strut and stuff in place. Uh, this top nut, or top bolt rather, has two nuts on it. So the first nut um, that's on here holds uh, the brake line in place. So there's one nut there. Then there's this little clamp here that kind of holds this brake line on. See, there's that clamp that right there. It slipped down, but that holds your brake line on, so you have that. Then there's a second nut underneath that that holds the actual bolt. Take off that second nut and then slide the entire bolt out. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom. And this will then release this strut. It's not under a lot of tension, like I said, it's just. You might have noticed that it slid up there as I did that. There are washers on the back side with the nuts, so make sure you get those. Let's go ahead and pull the bolt all the way out. And we can tip this forward and this whole assembly is just going to slide right out. And that part right there is done. This machine has just this simple washer here. That's going to stay in place. Some of them will have a... Uh, well, like a cam tensioner that will ratchet to create tension to give you a little more height on some of the later models. If it has that, just leave that tensioner where it's at, turn it all the way down so that you're on your lowest setting for the installation, and then once it's installed, you can dial that up wherever you want, although you probably really won't need to um, once you have the lift spacer in place because it kind of does that job, but a better job of it and gets you more range than what that little clicker will give you. So in this case, just leave the... Uh, the washer where it's at and then our new spacer here is going to sit on there like that and then the strut's going to go back down inside of there but before we do that we want to make sure that this is good and clean this one is already already pretty good and clean and then look inside of here make sure everything's nice and clean and uh, we'll go ahead and put the strut back in place okay so we have the strut paste spacer here in place you want to do it so that the uh, small, smaller end uh, faces up. If you try and put it on the other way, it really won't sit down right anyway. So small end facing up, that helps uh, center the spring once we get it in place. We'll go ahead and slide our strut down in place. Kind of slide down through that whole strut assembly. And then we're going to go ahead and tip this whole assembly back into... Uh, to the housing like it was before. So that takes a little pressure. And then I'll go ahead and let the machine down 
and guide that up in there. It's not a bad idea if you need to before you put this back together. This one was fine, but sometimes I'll put a little grease on that cup on the top so that your pivot, you know, works good. Um, it'd be nice if they had a grease zerk there so you could just do it normally, but since we have it apart, it's nice to put some grease up in there. And you want to guide this and make sure that it's, that it's centered good before you let all the pressure down because we're going to let the, the weight of the machine compress our spring for us so that we don't need a spring compressor. And then uh, to get this strut back down inside of here, I'll take a you know pry bar or screwdriver. It doesn't take a lot of pressure and just kind of work that thing back down in there. You want to be careful that you're not sticking in and gouging your shaft or anything. It's really hard to take a lot of, you'd have to be really be getting after it to, to hurt that shaft, but you don't want to scratch it because you'll ruin the seals in your strut if you do. But this will just kind of walk back down in there and you'll feel it stop. It'll bottom out. Um, and then I'll go ahead and show you, I'll get a different camera angle here and show you uh, where to feel. You want to make sure that the strut goes all the way back down in there. And you can check that by feeling up underneath that cast aluminum housing. Uh, you can feel if that strut's been put all the way back down and bottomed out. So I'll move camera positions and show you what that looks like. So I've got the camera position so you can see here better. We've slid the strut back down inside here. Right up in, underneath this boot, you can feel the bottom of the, uh, the black strut that we just slid down in there. You should feel that right immediately at the bottom. Um, since we haven't done anything with the other side yet, you can feel the other side, and uh, they should both feel the same. You want to make sure that the strut goes all the way back down inside of there so that we don't cause CV damage. When your wheel comes off the ground or goes in a hole, uh, that this, the suspension doesn't over travel and cause CV damage. Uh, so it is very important that that strut is slid all the way back down inside of there. And uh, we've got the, the weight of the machine holding everything in place. That strut's down there. And then we'll go ahead and put uh, both the pinch bolts back in. If you had trouble getting this down in there with just the, the screwdriver prying it like I showed, um, go ahead and you can put a uh, you can put a screwdriver or a small pry, pry bar in between here. You don't want to put a lot of tension on it. This is a cast aluminum piece, but you can put a little tension to kind of spread that housing a little bit if you need to. Most of the time you don't need to. Uh, the other thing you could do if you needed to, you could put a little bit of WD-40 on stuff so things slide a little better, but you definitely want to make sure all that stuff is very clean before you, uh, before you reassemble it. So um, we'll go ahead and put our pinch bolts back in and We'll put the nuts back on like they were before, tighten them up. Um, there's not really a torque spec here. You just want to get them good and snug. Um, again, on the top, we're going to put our original nut back on, get it tight, and, uh, and then we'll put the brake line clip back in place and put the, uh, the second nut holding the brake clip back on there. I won't bore you with showing you that. You know how that's going to go. And uh, then we'll move to the next step. So we got our pinch bolts tightened up and uh, now we can go ahead and put the cup back on the top here with the washer and then the nut. I always thread those you know, by hand to get them started. Make sure you're not cross threading something if you're using a gun like this. And you'll feel it stop. There really again isn't a torque spec here. We're just getting it down and tight. And uh, you can put grease on the bottom side of this top cup too. Um, doesn't hurt. Uh, a little grease uh, never hurts any of that kind of stuff because you are turning and pivoting and pivoting that. So um, get that greased up. And that's done with the top. So then next we'll go back out to the wheel and put the uh, the centering nut, or the it's called a castle nut, uh, back on the end of the CV there. And put the cotter pin back in. And then we'll have this one side done. Okay, so we will go ahead and put the washer back on here. And then the castle nut, you want to do it so that the, they call it a castle nut because it kind of looks like the top of a castle, but you want to do it so that the little uh, notched parts are facing out so you can get your cotter pin in there. And again, get that started by hand. And then we'll run it on with the gun. There's, there's two holes in this, uh, this shaft. There's one going this way and one that way. You just got to get either one of them lined up. You're going to kind of get it tight and then run it just a little bit to where it lines up for your cotter pin. And uh, sometimes you have to 
back it off a little bit sometimes you don't but get that cotter pin all the way back down in through there and then just bend it back up like it was before and we snap our cup back on make sure that thing's snapped on there good so you don't lose it on the trail or something and that finishes up the uh, front installation on the passenger side and then you're going to repeat this whole process on the driver's side and the front will be done next we'll move to the rear and I'll show you how the rear suspension goes on okay so now we have the front lift all done we're doing the rear I went ahead and removed the tires on both the driver and passenger side I've already unbolted the shock on the passenger side and just like I'm going to do right now so we'll just unbolt the driver's side And we want to do that so that for the reason we unbolt both sides is so that the sway bar doesn't fight us when we're trying to put the new bracket in. So then we'll take our, our new bracket. And you got the connecting part here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put that this way so that the connecting part is towards the midline of your vehicle. Slip that down in place. And then we'll take our bolt, We've taken one of the washers. This is a bolt that came in the kit. And I like to kind of fit it all the way through first before I try and put the spacer. Just makes it a little easier that I know everything's lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bolt back. Put that spacer in place. So now we got the spacer in there. We'll take Another washer, put it on this side, and then a nylock nut that comes in the kit. Just snug those up. And then we'll reuse the factory bolt. Um, it goes through just like it did before. Use the factory nut again. Put that on. And then we'll go ahead and tighten the bottom. Get that good and tight. You want to wrench on that till it's nice and tight. Again, not a torque spec there, really. Just, you're just wanting to snug it up. Dropped a wrench there. And then the top one, same thing. Just snug it up. You don't have to get crazy with it on the top one, especially. The bottom one, get it super tight. The top one, you just want to, you know, tighten it up till you close these brackets a little bit. There's a little bit of a gap there naturally. Um, and then you can go ahead and tension this a little bit if you need to. Um, each machine's a little bit different, you know, depending on how it's been broken in. But this little tool here comes in your toolkit and uh, to add tension to it, um, you just click it on the, the body. It's kind of a, a little bit tricky sometimes. Try not to block the camera. But then you can just kind of walk that up if you need to. And it's kind of a, on a case-by-case -case basis. Some machines need no tension to set level. Some of them need a little bit. Um, it just kind of depends. These things are sprung really light on the 570s and the, the mid sizes, so sometimes we add a little bit of preload. It doesn't really affect your ride quality, it just adjusts the height, just a little bit of fine tuning. So uh, basically, that's it. Uh, do this on the driver's or passenger side as well, so both sides are done. Same thing, just tighten everything up and put your wheels back on, and you're good to go. Uh, we didn't do anything with the sway bar on this model. Uh, because it's attached to the arm. On some models um, of the mid sizes, the sway bar actually has a bolt that's extra long that runs through and the sway bar attaches to the, the shock bolt. So if it's one of those cases, you want to basically just you know unbolt that, you bolt everything in just like we've seen, and then your sway bar would link would follow you back up with your new shock bolt. So everything would tie back together. Uh, but like I say, on the newer models, the 570s and stuff, we don't do anything with the sway bar. It sits at a slightly greater angle than it used to, but it's still fine. It's still uh, uh, well within the working range of, of everything and uh, keeps everything nice and tight and strong. So 
that's basically it. Got both sides uh, mounted up, put our tires on, and that completes the install. Super easy, something you can do at home with just basic hand tools. And uh, yeah, nice and easy. So here are a few pictures of some customer machines with the lift installed and some different wheels and tires. Uh, you'll see some of the machines here have a uh, factory wheel with a bigger tire. Uh, if you're going to run the factory wheels with a bigger tire, you want to stay pretty close to the same widths as what it comes with. Um, usually like a 27 by 9 in the front and a 27 by 10 or 11 in the rear. Uh, with the steel wheels, it's super close. So with steel wheels and an aftermarket tire, you may need to run a wheel spacer um, with the factory wheels and tires together you know as they come you will not need a wheel spacer um, with the aluminum factory wheels uh, they give you a little bit more room that way most of the times we find you don't need a wheel spacer with those but again it depends on how much sidewall bulge the tire has uh, because that's where it gets close in the front it gets close to the tie rod end in the back it gets real close to the shock um, so that's where you kind of run into that scenario. If you buy new wheels and tires, you can get the wheels with a little bit more offset in them, so you have plenty of clearance. Um, I, if, if you're buying new wheels and tires, I like to run the same size all the way around. That way you can get, uh, get some better tread life by rotating your tires from time to time. Um, it'll also get you a little more stability with the wheels, you know, offset a little bit. Um, I like to run like a with just the lift kit, a 27, 10, 14 tire on a 14 by 7 wheel with a 4 plus 3 offset. Um, that's what the camo machine uh, in this picture, the camo two seat machine has. Um, and if you're going to go into the 30s, uh, you'll have to run a forward A arm with the lift kit. Uh, and then you can get up to a 30 inch tire or anything, of course, below that as well. Um, and again, if, if you have questions, you can call me anytime, seven days a week, um, or text me, uh, or email me. You can find the email on the website. Um, I, I'm around all the time, and I've done you know every scenario there is out there. So you can call me anytime, and I can give you advice. And uh, I keep the kits in stock. I ship them the same day they're ordered, and uh, they get to you real quick, usually two to three days delivery time. And yeah, if you need anything, give me a call. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.